Hello everybody. How's it going? All right, let's get situated. Caitlin, already here. How's it going, guys? How are you? Oh my goodness. It's Monday and I'm dragging behind. <laughs> Trying to get rocking. Is everybody... Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? I'm finally working on this cowboy again. Hey! Doing good. Doing good for a Monday. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right. I'm just trying to think about what I should do at this point. Um, there's a lot of things I want to do, but uh, there are all these little things here and there. Nitpicky little business. Taken out by a Twitch ad. Oh, you, yeah, because you have to be... Uh, you have to be a subscriber, I think, to Twitch something. Here and there, nitpicky little business. All right, let's see. Got to get Facebook going. All right. All right, cool. So this is where we last left off a long time ago. Uh, hey, what's up, Joner? I'm doing concept work for some new paintings. Cool. Cool, cool. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. One second. One second. Hi. <laughs> All up close. It'll pop back. There we go. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> hey. Yeah, it's it's got a depth of field on it because it's a fancy dancy camera. All right. Hey, what's up, Craig? How are you? Okay, let's see. What are we doing here? You guys are already popping me with the questions. Great. Uh... How do you make a day beard with nano mesh or fiber mesh? Can you use multiple nano meshes or a variation? Uh, so, well, this, what I have on him is just, is, this is just poly paint, of course. But um, basically, if I wanted to give him like a five o'clock shadow, I think, is that what you're talking about? Like just, uh, or a three day beard? I don't know. Um, it just kind of depends on your goal. If you're going to take it into a game engine, uh, you might want to use hair cards. It depends on how long you want your fur to be. Um, if you're just going to use it for a render, then you just use fiber mesh. And yes, you can use multiple fiber meshes. I would not use nano mesh. I would stay away from nano mesh. Um, I would, uh, and then you just kind of just, you know, there's tutorials out there. I, I don't have time to go through a fiber mesh tutorial right now, but um, I, I will possibly in a future stream. But um, yeah, you can use, just mask off an area, hit fiber mesh, which is down here. Just hit fiber mesh and then just play with the settings until you're happy with it and then hit accept and off to the races. So yeah, I wouldn't, I would steer clear of nano mesh for hair. Oh, hey, Night Shadow. <laughs> yeah, this is my new time so more people can catch me. Let's see. Let's see. Um, bu -bu -bum. Craig, I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> For a Monday. I've spent, I spent all Monday uh, outside doing some yard work, but it's, it's been nice. It's nice to smell the, the wet grass and get in there, fixing the sprinklers. Just started with ZBrush, what do you suggest you do first? I got a sculpting background and sculpt a lot, awesome. Um, last five months I'm into Minus Fundamentals, not. Now you just bought ZBrush and starting with it. Oh yeah. Um, hey, what's up Ronnie? <laughs> Welcome man. Um, so what you should do, um, there, so, gosh. I'm, a, I'm actually thinking about doing a beginning ZBrush like intro to ZBrush thing and just uh, setting it out there for free on YouTube. So I don't have it yet, but I would, because um, a lot of people they're when they're brand spanking new, I don't want them to go and, you know, invest a whole bunch of money in my course if they're not sure if they're going to want to, you know, use it or not. So I do have an online course. Um, 
But if you're brand new to ZBrush, uh, Michael Pavlovich has a fantastic intro to ZBrush um, on, like uh, series on YouTube. You should check that out. And it's you spell his last name. It's like Pavlov, like P-A-V-L-O-V, Pavlovich. So look his stuff up. It's fantastic. Um, then, um, yeah, just... Just um, and if you sign up for my free brushes, I give you some some free training, with along with it. Uh, you can try that out. But I do have some beginner stuff in my course. Like, I actually sat down with a friend of mine. His name's Adam Manoa, and he was a he was a traditional illustrator. I sat down with him and walked him by hand through two hours of getting started and getting used to ZBrush. So that's in my course. Um, yeah, uh, I. And then I also, I have, uh, I have a lot of beginning stuff in there. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's kind of what, what you can, what you can try if you'd like. Sounds like he's from Croatia. Maybe. I'm not sure where his last name is from. Moon mix. Uh, when you have contract work, do you have to sculpt to a certain size? Yes. That's a great question. So it just depends on uh, it depends on their scale. Sometimes they work in like regular scale. Sometimes most of the time people work in uh, meters. So inside of Maya, uh, they work in meters, and that is why I have the uh, the ruler brush. So see this ruler right here. This ruler is um, you can think of it like two meters tall. Uh, an average person is one hundred and seventy. Uh, centimeters tall I believe and um, so you can see the one seven behind his hat he's about like a, the size of an average person and that just means when I when I take him over to Maya he'll be the proper size for me to um, you know retopologize him and make him into a game character if I'd like so that is why I have that ruler in there and uh, that's and that that just helps you go back and forth between Maya and ZBrush um, and that that ruler was built in Maya at two meters, so from zero to two meters tall. And it just yeah, like I said, it just depends on the game engine. So, <laughs> Mordekiner, we actually d I'm in the USA and we don't use the weird inches for for characters. We don't. We just we use meters. So who knew? Anyway. Meters make sense. I don't know where Imperial, whatever, <laughs> where it came from. It's it's not the best at all. It reminds me of like a, like a teenager. Like the U.S. is like a teenager. They're like, we're not going to use your stupid measuring system. We're going to come up with our own. It's going to be better. We're going to make it. <laughs> and it's that's how we ended up with like inches. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, I don't know where it came from. I just know it's not very good. That's all I know. All right. Let's see. What am I? What do I want to work on? So there's so many little details. Do you guys want me to work on the gun, like the big gun? So Moon Mix, if you if you sculpt at a, at the wrong size, it's pretty easy to scale it to the proper size. Don't. But that being said, make sure. Okay, don't ever scale your mo like scale it your model up and down in very large sizes in your uh, T-Pose Master. You will you will break your model. Instead, what I recommend doing, if your model is giant or it's very small, the best thing to do is use Dynamesh Master. So I know it sounds weird. Where is it? Do I not have it installed? Hmm, I don't have it listed here. Anyway, Dynamesh Master will allow you to scale your entire model up or down. So, and by increments of 10, I believe. So that, yeah, it's it's super nice. And yeah, just do not use Transpose Master. Don't go, you know, down and make a, make a pose, you know, like you're gonna make a pose, go all the way down to your lowest and then scale your model up and then go back up in your T-Pose Mesh. It will just cause all sorts of problems. So don't, don't do that. Yeah, straw pull. <laughs> hey, what's up, Art? You vote for the rifle? You guys want to see me work on the rifle? Stuff you should know. Podcast has a great episode. 
on why the U.S. isn't on the metric system. Oh, really? The stuff you should know? Okay, I'm writing that down. Hold on. I want to I wanna check that out. Uh, stuff you should know. Metric. Okay, got it. Did I not write it down? Yes, I did. Okay. Awesome. Save for later. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, Ruzi. That will, that, that is true, unify will, but it, it, will, it will scale it to the size that ZBrush likes, but it's dangerous because if you're also going back and forth between other programs, it's going to throw off your scale. So unify will, say, say you started in Maya and you're working in meters and then you brought it into ZBrush. If you bring it into ZBrush like with GoZ, for example, the plugin called GoZ, your model is going to be really, really big inside of ZBrush, and ZBrush does not like that. So if you hit Unify, it's going to shrink your model and everything else down to the size that ZBrush likes it. But when you go back to Maya, it's going to be little puny size over in Maya. It's going to be broken. So um, that that's why I don't use Unify. That's why I use the ruler file that I built. The ruler, the ruler file is if you use FBX or OBJ to go back and forth to any program that uses meters, like, um, for example, like Substance Painter or Marmoset um, or Marvelous Designer, for example, you're going to get that one-to-one -one scale if you use that ruler. So, and I set it up with Joseph Drust, a guy that works at Pixelogic, um, because when, when you export this, see, it's... Uh, the export scale is set to 100. So when it exports out of here, like as in an OBJ or an FBX, the size will be pr will be correct. So I give away this ruler over on my website. If you go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com, sign up for my newsletter, you'll get this ruler file. It's a it's actually a project. It's not a tool. It's not a ZBrush tool. So whenever you open up ZBrush, just double click on that ruler file in your projects folder. If you put it in your projects folder, it'll, it'll show up right here. Just double click it and then load your tool into that file. Then your uh, your character will be uh, proper size. So yes, and it also works with 3D printing. So uh, this, and Kate, Caitlin 3D prints all the time. She's one of my students and she uses this ruler. And this is what we use for, um, for at, at Disney Interactive on Disney Infinity is um, because there's not really a scale inside of ZBrush. So you kind of have to create your own scale. Sorry, my nose is itching today. Um, you have to create your own scale and you have to kind of create your own bounding box. So what this is, is you can think of it as 200 millimeters tall. Since it's in meters, the ruler is flexible. You can use it as centimeters, you can use it as millimeters, you can use it as meters, even though it's, it doesn't work out math wise, but it does work out proportionally. So if you're going to print this guy out at 170, well, I guess 100 and almost, uh, gosh, uh, 179 millimeters tall, instead of like guessing how tall this guy is going to be, all you have to do is export him at 200 millimeters and he will print the proper size because you have, oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Sorry. If you export him out as at 200 millimeters, if you go over here, I'll show you. So you double click. Well, in my user interface, I've parked my Z plugins over on this left-hand side. If you, you can also get to them right here under Z plugin. And if you go to this 3D print hub, you can see it right here, okay? And if you're using my ruler, and if your entire model is contained within that ruler, this, see how his, his boots are hanging a little lower than the ruler? Um, hey, what's up, Chris? I'll get to you guys' questions in one second. Um, See how his feet are hanging underneath that ruler? I, I would need to move him up so he is within that ruler space because that ruler acts like a bounding box, okay? So you need to keep everything within that bounding box. If, you're, if, you're, uh, if your character is going to be larger, like say this, uh, like this collector's edition guy that I did, this, this collector's edition, I don't know if you guys can see that. But I did this collector's edition. This guy is way taller than, a, than 200 millimeters. So what, what do you do then? All you have to do is duplicate that ruler and make it match and then export it at the double size. So instead of 200 millimeters, you'd export it at 400 millimeters, if that makes sense. That would create your new bounding box. So you're not really limited by this ruler. You just need to kind of stack them up. 
if you if your character's taller than that. Okay, but that'll give you that'll give you the proper size. It looks like he's uh, he's uh, frozen in carbonite here for a minute. <laughs> okay. Anyway, sorry for the tangent, guys. But there you go. That's how you use my ruler. And so right here in x in uh, millimeters, sometimes you type it in here and it doesn't accept. See how it went back to 25? You'll need to roll this little this little slider for a minute. Then you can type it in there. There we go. Now it takes. So if you have the ruler, you have your character smaller than the ruler, you want to export for 3D printing, all you have to do is type 200 in there, millimeters, and then export everything together. In, uh, in, it will be, it'll export in relation to each other. And most 3D printers like STL files right here. So you export an STL file and then you can print it out. You can send it to Shapeways, you can, you know. Then, then you don't have to guess on the size. You're like, well, I don't know how big my, my guy is gonna be, you know. You can just take, if you have, if you have a uh, millimeter ruler in, in real world, you know, you can just hold it up and say, okay, my character is gonna be this tall, you know. You can actually see it in physical space. That kinda helps. All right, <laughs> let's see, da, 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 da. do you bake your detail later? Oh, somebody asked me how many films. Craig, I've worked on the, the, the big number of zero films. I have not worked in films. I'm a game guy, so I work in games. I've been working in games for uh, about 19 years now. Let's see, uh, Daniel, when, will there be new contest <laughs> oh daniel i love you because you always ask you're like you like keep me on target you're like when's the next q a session when's the next contest i'm gonna be doing it very very soon very very soon so uh like the the retrogasm contest is is um finishing up just now so i don't like i said last stream i don't want to you know overlap the two uh so but i i am going to i'm going to put up a poll for people and see what we want to do the next uh, the next character contest so if you guys want to know what he's talking about i do contests within my course and uh, just to kind of motivate people and give people a deadline and uh i haven't done one for like a month or two i can't remember how long it's been anyway because the retrogasm contest has been going on so i've suggested students uh, take part in that instead so anyway okay here we go that sizer's a little twitchy. I, I find I need to size it to two. Oh, really? 200.1? We'll have to talk about that. I wonder, I wonder what's going on with that. That's really, that's really weird. Huh. Hey, what's up, Bridge? How you doing? Okay, I should probably scope something today, eh? <laughs> okay, and you guys wanted me to do the, the rifle, right? I started on it. You can see, I think I started on it in one of my previous previous streams you've been very lazy yeah there that's uh, the uh the community's kind of slowed down a little bit but we'll we'll get there and my contract work is almost done almost done so hopefully i can get that done soon and i have um i have a i just recorded myself doing some freelance work for playful i did a pose for playful um and uh i recorded it and i'll i'm gonna put that up for you guys too so okay yeah nothing like a deadline right <laughs> will it print as solid object or hollow rusey it depends on how you set it up i if it's big if it's big like that uh that that collector's edition monster i'll definitely hollow it out but if it's a little character about this tall um, and the appendages are really small. I, I typically do not hollow it out. I'll print it, pr print it solid. Even that pirate girl that got printed out this tall, she's solid. <laughs> so it depends on how much material you want to save, I guess. Or how flimsy you want it to be. It just depends. Caitlin, how often do you hollow stuff out? She does a lot more printing than I do recently. Lately. That's a good question, though. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just tweaking things as I see them really quick. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's work on this gun. There we go. Yeah, that resin is expensive. <laughs> And then only if it's big, right, right. 
So you're saying if you do like a like an extrusion printer, you typically won't hollow it out, or will you? Okay, this is the part that I've built so far. And I'm gonna, here, I'm gonna do something weird with this, with this reference. I'm gonna rotate it like this and make it large and stick it down in this corner behind my head. <laughs> I'm gonna make him peeking out from behind my, my video. <laughs> He's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> And the reason I did this just so I can see the gun better. <laughs> and it looks funny. Why not? Okay. So uh let's let's make this uh can you guys all see that? Alright. Yep. <laughs> That's an <laughs> sounds like a like a stripper name or something. <laughs> oh sorry, I'm in a weird mood today. There we go. <laughs> Uh, Peter, let's see. Can you talk about a little bit about mat caps later on? I've been looking a lot of different workflows. I'm into the hand-painted stuff, and I see a lot of dudes using their mat caps in the pipe. Uh, honestly, Peter, I don't like mat caps. Um, and Moon Mix, no, it was a new character from a new game, completely new game. But I did get permission to to, sh to show you guys. So, Okay, Um so I, I can let me go over mat caps really quick, and I'll tell you why. Peekaboo <laughs> cowboy! Oh my goodness, you guys! All right. <laughs> um, so this is how this is how materials work. Really quick, you guys. You, <laughs> red mat cap, red wax rules. Okay. So the how I think about mat cap or materials in general is um, <laughs> the best way I can describe it is kind of like. Uh, it's like an egg, like you know when you're when you're dying eggs, okay. And then, do you guys remember those old cellophane wraps that you could like melt around your egg? It's probably the worst, the worst example I could come up with. <laughs> but I kind of think about the 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 poly paint, like the dye or the color that you put on the actual egg itself. Then I think of the material as something you wrap on top of that that kind of like that cellophane wrap thing um, that will uh, mix with the color underneath, okay? So I will typically only use, uh, it's called Skin Shade 4, that's right here, or Flat Color, which is right here. That's why I only have these two on my user interface. And that's, that's kind of maybe just me, but I don't like to use materials to define my colors because it has honestly it has a very limited palette even for my skins um that's the only time i'll ever use a specific material is on my eyes so if i want if i want eyes i will use this zebra eye reflection he makes he makes like four of them and you can go find them online just type zebra uh zbrush material or something like that you can you can find them and then i also use the zebra gray or modeling to see my surfaces when my uh when my colors are hidden i'll hide my colors and i'll just put one of these materials on so i can see the peaks and valleys in the surface quality that because you, it's hard to see the surface quality with skin shade for it's very very bright and white so um then i there's this zebra terracotta i don't use that very much but there is one called zebra paint that is very similar I'll turn that on right now. It's very, very similar to uh, Zebra or Skin Shade 4. Let me, sh let me come over here and I'm gonna show you really fast why or, or how it works, okay? So here we have this, this brown sphere. We can change it to whatever color. And as long as you, <laughs> wax on, wax off. As long as you uh, change the color right here, it's gonna change the material, okay? So I'm gonna change it to like a light gray so you can see it. Now this has zebra paint on it, okay? And if I click here and I change it to like this reflected red, right? Now it's got that reflected red color on it. I'm gonna divide it a couple times so it's a nicer looking sphere. And then if I change it to gold, it's gonna do that. So in, if I grab this hard paint brush, this is a, a brush I made that just has uh, hardly any fall off on it. And then I have this soft paint brush that has a lot of fall off on it. That's the two the two paint brushes I use. Now, if I if I change this color, 
Since I haven't done any poly paint on this piece yet, if I change this color to red, you'll see it's gonna that red is now mixing with this gold. See how that can be very confusing? You're just like, what? Why is my material looking like this? I don't understand. That's why I keep it on uh, Skin Shade 4 most of the time. This is your actual color. This is the, the cleanest color that you can um, get is with Skin Shade 4 or that Zero Paint, okay? Or flat color. This is your flat color. See the difference? There's flat color. That's your real actual red that you're painting on there. And then here's Skin Shade 4, which is like a, a version of it, right? So um, I can actually hit Fill Object, which is going to fill this object with poly paint. Now, if I switch colors, it's not going to change the color. See, because I filled it, I filled it with poly paint. So I can paint on it like this, but I, it's not going to change when I'm actually changing colors. Now, the only way to get rid of that is, well, you can't, <laughs> honestly, not with poly paint. You can with materials, but you can't with poly paint. Okay. So you can just, once you fill it, you're kind of stuck and, uh, you can't ever go back to having an unfilled object, if that makes sense. I actually asked Pixelogic about that, and they're like, nope, once you do it, it's kind of there. Um, okay, but if you fill, and you'll notice that I'm on RGB up here. See that, RGB? And then there's M RGB, and then just M. Okay, M stands for material, and RGB stands for red, green, blue color. That's poly paint, okay? So if I switch over to M, and then I... I'm going to change this to like this re reflect, ugh, excuse me, this reflect orange. And then I fill it. I fill the object with this M selected. It's going to fill the object with a material and it's not going to fill it with poly paint. So you can see now it's filled with orange. Now, if I, it's same thing. If I go to switch to a different material, like this Chrome bright, see, this does not change because I have filled that object with that material so it's completely yeah it's, it's crazy okay so i can fill it now with the chrome but now if i go get a different material like this gold it's not going to change see it's not so if i go to ma shiny it's not going to change okay so if you want to clear that material that is why i have this flat color shader on or material on my user interface because that is a, a way to reset the material on here okay <laughs> hey dark this will be this will be on th they'll record it and put it on their uh, youtube channel if you want to see it back anyway so if i if i select this flat color and i have material selected and i hit fill object that's going to reset and clear off any material that you have. One of the biggest rookie mistakes that I see happen, because people just don't know, is they will, and I'll, I'll do it myself, and I won't even realize that I'm doing it. But if I switch this over to, say, Skin Shade 4, okay? I have Skin Shade 4 going, and notice I have material turned on right here, okay? Oh, Steve James in the house. Make Poly Mesh 3D will remove the poly paint data? Well, it'll, <laughs> right, you're, you're totally correct, Steve. It'll, it'll remove all of the poly paint data though, right? It'll clear it completely out. That's interesting. So will, uh, so will decimate. D decimate will do it. That's interesting. How are you doing, Steve? Okay, so if I have this material, so, or M selected for material, and then I have um, hard paint selected, then I, I go to color on my mesh, see that? It looks like it's not doing anything, but it is. It's actually painting the material on the surface of the object, and you can't see that until you switch materials like this. See that mess? So I actually painted the Skin Shade 4 material on the surface of my, of my object, and then wherever I did not paint is still, uh, it, it still doesn't have material assigned to it, if that makes sense. So a lot of people go, why can't I get rid of that little mess that I made on there? What is it? What is it? So if you, if you have a surface that you can't understand or figure out, or why is it looking so crappy, try selecting flat color, making sure material is selected, and then hit, hit fill object. And that will get rid of all the material that's been assigned to the surface of that object and, and clear it all out. So I hope that helps you guys out. <laughs> okay, so... 
after all that blah 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 let's go back to skin shade 4 and that's in a nutshell that's why I don't use matte caps I just use skin shade 4 or I use zebra clay if I want to see the surface of my object so long-winded there you go <laughs> okay let's get back to doing doing this <laughs> Sometimes you'll ask me a question and I'll go off on a tangent like that. Thanks, Steve. I haven't talked to you for a while. You all right? How's the kid? <laughs> Steve's a Steve's a, a fairly new dad. All right. I want to make sure my symmetry is on. I'm going to insert a cylinder. Yep. No problem, Peter. I hope... I mean, there's a lot of people here that know about materials, but I figured, hey, there's a refresher. Yep, kids. Kids are a lot of work. <laughs> that is for sure. Okay. I'm just making this, uh, this site. It's like this completely primitive telescope site. All right. It's about, hangs out, it's about right there. <laughs> yep a lot of sleep in the daytime probably he's like stay at home dad too he's awesome let's see ba -ba -boom. did I miss any let's see sometimes I listen to say music while watching but it doesn't work every time <laughs> no worries did I miss anything? Let me scroll up. Oh, hey, Nate, over on Facebook. How's it going? Hey, uh, Noah, over on Facebook. He asks, um, hey, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Um, do you use Unreal Engine? Sometimes I do. Um, it depends on the game. It depends on the, uh, the company I'm doing work for, if they're actually using it or not. But yes, I have used Unity and Unreal Engine in the past but I've used also a lot of uh, proprietary engines as well. Okay, let's go to Zmodeler and I'm just gonna cut in some of these, uh, see where these, the, these kind of caps are. I can either build them in there and, and leave them as separate pieces. That, that's typically what I do. But for this one, I, I decided I'm just going to, uh, I'm gonna cut them in and extrude them out. What's up, Jimmy? How's it going? Hey, what's up, Doug? Uh, let's see, Dark, don't know if you saw it last time, but I'd like to say I've learned a ton from your course. Oh, thank you so much. Right on, right on. I, I always love to hear it. I always love to hear it. Thank you very much. Am I allowed to say the engine I like the best? Hmm, that's a tough one. I would probably say Unreal. And the reason why I say Unreal is because there are so many studios that are using it and they're giving um epic a lot of feedback on that engine so if if they're just if there's a team that's just working on one engine internally all they get are the feedback from the people that are using it internally and there's typically not enough programmers to keep up with that engine and uh, keep up with all the um, people that are needing updates and things like that like um, just just little examples like uh uh, let's see, like LODs or Screen Space AO or anything like that. Um, so, but with Unreal, there are so many companies using it and they're getting so much feedback and they have so many programmers dedicated to making that engine the best it can be. And Unity is very similar, but Unity is more like a scrappy, uh, it's getting better, but it's kind of more like a scrappy. It started out a little later, so it's a little uh, further back in the game, but I would, I would say, uh, I would say, yeah, Unreal is probably the farthest along and um, easiest. I don't want to say easiest to use, but it's quite easy to use. Unreal is C++. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, let's see. Du, du, du. Hi, this is my first time here. Let's see. Oh, hey, what's up, Stefano? How are you? Good to see you, man. All right, I'm going to extrude this. And what's cool is with Z Modeler, see when you pop this up, there's there's actions and there's targets and there's modifiers. So you can see the actions right here. So this is what you want to do and this is what you want to do it to. 
and this is how you want to do it, I guess. So, um, like I want to do an extrude, but I want to do it to a poly loop. There's two different ways I could do it. I can, I can assign this whole ring to a brand new poly group and then extrude that. Or since it's a ring, it's essentially a poly loop. I can just extrude around this ring. So, and it's kind of hard to see. I don't know if I can get in there. Can you kind of see that? <laughs> this poly group is, is yellow. So hold on a second. Let me, it's hard to see it, but there's, there's an orange line in there and it gives you the poly loop direction, the way, the way you're going to do it. Let me see if I can, uh, there we go. Give it a different poly group. Okay. Can you guys see that orange little line there? So I'm going to click and drag around that poly loop and it's essentially going to extrude that ring. Okay. Let's see. I'm currently making a game in Unity. I hate programming with C. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Unity is more uh, like artist user friendly, but Unreal is more, um, it's like big studio. AAA games are made with it all the time. And it just, it's very functional. You know, it does a lot of stuff. Uh, Peter, Shane, in your texture process, do you use cavity maps at all? Do you basically let your texture work di di dictate the look? Yes, I do use cavity maps on specific ga games or it just depends on what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, for my last contract, the one I'm currently working on right now, I used ca I use cavity maps a lot. I actually get them from uh, baking stuff in Marmoset. So let's see, I'm going to slide this now. So if here's another thing, if you are doing normal maps, okay, if you're using normal maps in your game engine and your normal maps are kind of defining some of the higher res details, um, for example, see this, uh, this scope, you can see the little edges right here, these edges that I just extruded. Well, if I just made a single cylinder and wrapped it around this thing and I tried to make the normal map define this extrusion off the surface, it's, I'm not going to get it because these angles are at 90 degrees. Now I could go and model those in the low resolution version, but it's going to add more polygons. So I, it's, it's kind of this balance as far as what is going to actually affect the silhouette of the character. So I think this extrusion off of this um, scope is not large enough to warrant actually more more modeling in the low resolution. So I'm going to just adjust these so there's not 90 degree angles. So I'm going to slide the en entire edge loop. So I'm going to grab this and slide it. That way it's going to make an angle that the normal map rays are going to see. Does that make sense? They're going to see it when it, when it uh, does its thing. So, but I will have um, polygons here on the front but um, again, when I extrude, I'm going to push that in. So I'm going to make the glass. I'm going to actually extrude this in. And again, I'm going to have to adjust it so it doesn't have 90 degree bevel on the inside. Daniel, what do I know about Unreal Blueprint, Blueprint scripting? I know nothing. <laughs> I know zero of that. I apologize. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the white selection aspect of Z model. Uh, oh, wait. You ask a question higher. Uh, oh, can you select Z model or polygons with a drag rectangle or do you have to click and select around the model? Um, so it's not like your typical selection. Like you, you typically do not select things inside of ZBrush like you select things inside of Maya. You have this uh, select rectangle, yes. You have this select lasso, yes. There's, there's those two different ways. But what you typically use are poly groups or ways to select like poly loops or different things like that. And um, it's, it's just a different way of thinking about it. And it takes a while. If you're coming from a different um, poly model or program, it does take a little while to get your head around. But um, it's the majority of it is you have to kind of define your poly groups and use them that way. So I don't know if that answers your question or not. <laughs> Okay, the line highlighting explains why I kept extruding the wrong polygroup. Yes, yes. So if, I mean, you probably can't see it here on the stream, 
But if you get close here, let's see. Okay, so can you see that orange line coming off of, of here pointing this direction? See how it says extrude poly loop? If I do it right now, look at that. It's going to extrude in that direction because my orange line was pointing down that direction. But if I wanted to extrude in the in the ring, I just make sure, see that little red line? You can just go above it or below it or left or right. And then you can kind of extrude it like this. Not that I want to do that, but hey. <laughs> uh, let's see, Noah says, do you scale your characters in ZBrush for Unreal? If you do, what is the scale from Unreal Engine to ZBrush? Okay, so Noah, I actually answered that question, that very question earlier in the stream today. Um, but what I do is I um, I use my I use my ruler file. So if you go to here's this is this is my ruler right here, and this is just the way I do it, just me particularly. So um, what I do is I use this ruler to help me go back and forth. And since Unreal uses meters you can go back and forth using that ruler as a two meter ruler to help you guide your character scale and your character size, okay? So it depends on your game engine, your, um, if, you're, if you're doing an indie game, if you're just working on your own, that will give you, uh, you know, your two meter scale. A typical person's like 170 mil centimeters, um, I think. I'm not exactly sure on that, but, uh, Anyway, that's that's what I do. I go back and forth between Maya using a like an OBJ or an FBX. You can do it with Blender if you're using Blender. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you go back and forth um, using something that's going to give you kind of a guide and and match the size. So that ruler was built in Maya at two meters tall. So that is why it kind of works as far as like ex exporting your characters into Unreal from there. Um, so. I hope that I hope that helps, and you can get that ruler from uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. If you sign up for my newsletter, you'll get it for free. So, if you like to try it out, you can. Okay, let me get back to it here. Thanks, Moon Mix. <laughs> You're like Johnny on the spot with the with the links today. Thank you so much. Okay, extrude now. See, I want to push this circle in. And I have it on extrude poly loop. If I do that now, it's going to do this. That's not what I want. I want to extrude poly group all. Okay. Now, since I have green, a green poly group on the back and a green poly group on the front, it's going to do both at the same time. So I'm just going to push this in. But you can see that this poly loop is also the same color. And that is not what I want. So for a second, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to mask this off. And hit Control W. So Control W will add, will make a new poly group from whatever is masked. Okay. So I just wanted to, you know, assign this a new poly group. You can also, um, and it's kind of, it's kind of difficult the way ZBrush does this because if see how this this vertice right here, it's sharing two poly groups between it. Okay. So. If I hold down control and I tap on this, this corner, sorry, I need to have my gizmo active in order to do this. If I hold down control and tap here, let me see, there we go. It's, it's doing, and you have to do this by tapping on a vertice. You can't, you can't do it in the middle of an edge. It doesn't work. See how all of my vertices are being highlighted as I'm dragging across. Um, if I control click on one of these vertices, since it's sharing between two poly groups, it's going to unmask those two poly groups. But if I wanted, and this is this is kind of one of those frustrating workarounds that um, I find myself doing occasionally. Just like I, um, so I there's no way I can uh, you know isolate this purple group because all of the all of the dots are sharing with other polygroups and maybe somebody knows something I don't but see I can isolate this it's going to isolate everything what if I just want to isolate the the purple well there's looks like I messed up this this point here I moved it okay so um say I wanted to just isolate the purple well I can insert a loop like this insert single edge loop if I insert it in the middle of this purple 
which is not what I want. I don't want an extra edge loop, but that's the only way I can isolate the purple. See that? Because I'm clicking on a vertice that's in the middle of that all of that poly group. And it's kind of a that's kind of it's kind of a workaround. It's kind of frustrating sometimes, but like say I wanted to um, you know, just isolate this yellow. Maybe one of you guys know you know, maybe a workaround, but if I insert a poly loop right there, then I can isolate it. See that? And then I can also delete that edge, but sometimes I'll just do that. You know, if I want to isolate something, it's kind of a pain. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So I can, um, I can isolate this green now because it's not shared and, um, I don't need to mask it. I can just push it in. So boop, extrude. Control shift, click the edge. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Even if I have, um, it, I think what you're talking about is if I have select lasso and I do control shift or control shift, it does isolate and I will do that, but I'll have to, you know, keep going and do, do it like that. And that, you know, it's, it's like, you know, what do you do? Do you, do you insert an edge and then isolate it? Or do you go down every single one and do it that way? Um, yeah, it's just kind of a pain. <laughs> anyway, no big deal. No big deal. Okay. So now I'm going to, um, now that I have this masked, I don't know why, why did it change the poly group on that guy? Okay. See when I, when I extruded that thing, let me go back. It it made it a new poly group, but it made it yellow, like the like the ring on the outside. See, so watch this. So if I go here, extrude poly group all, and I push it in. See how it changed the poly group to yellow? It's not what I want, but that's okay. I can invert and hit um, Control W. But since that's another thing, is if the mask shares the edge with something else. See, it also made that inner wall pink too. And that's not what I want either. So, um, there's, there's just, th these are the kind of the steps you have to go through as you're working through using, um, Z modeler, because there are some tricky things that it doesn't do like a normal, um, polygon modeling program. So, and that's one of them. <laughs> so now if I, yeah, if I wanted to make this its own poly group, I have to hide that, hide this, invert, control W. So control W not only does it um, make whatever you have masked have a poly, make its own poly group, but it's also if you have something isolated. All right, dark, thanks, man. So, um, so control W will also add a new poly group to whatever's showing, okay? All right, side, thanks for stopping by. Blame Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. That's funny. Okay, so so now I can mask this thing. All I wanted to do is scale it in. So the edges were not Did it scale this clear in? No, yes it did. Okay. See Okay, I need to let me see local symmetry. Will it do the same thing? No. Alright, I'm gonna have to do these one at a time because it's kind of pulling it all the way down inside. So I'm going to do one, then the other, but I still need to mask this side off. There we go. Hey, what's up, Mike? Select and transpose poly loop. So that, that will do a loop at a time, right? But not the whole, not the whole thing. What's up, David? Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm going to kind of round this out a bit. Oh, gosh. It's kind of pointed. Let's smooth it down. There we go. I'm just trying to get it kind of like a lens looking thing on there. Noah. Oh, sorry. I'm not looking at uh, Facebook as much as I should. 
Uh, what does it say? Uh, you're doing a, a game, Time War, and I'm the character and weapons designer. Oh, awesome. And hey, Udom, Udoms, I can't pronounce your name. <laughs> How's it going over on Facebook? <laughs> I'll just say that. Hi. Thanks for watching. Okay. I don't know why I'm using my mouse. Okay. Let's uh let's make these these square bits. I'm kind of going slow today. Jeez. Uh let's Speed this up a little bit. That's just insert cube. Just make it the size you want. Easy peasy. I'll probably do some support edges on these instead of using creasing. Thanks for all the questions, guys. By the way, Yeah, that's, that's what happens if I don't crease the edges and I turn on dynamic subdivisions. Just kind of gets stretched out. Let's see. Just going to make these little, little guys. Does Noah, does Ryan put on my class? Are you talking about Ryan Kingsland? No, um, I have, I, 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 uh, I host my own course. So my course is over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com and, uh, you can just get on the news group there if you want to be notified when it's going to be opening again. Hey, Grump Punch. Um, have I gotten into using ZBrush's new live Boolean tool? I have, yes. I might do some of that here. In fact, I probably will. Um, see these these slots in the, I don't know if you can see in, in the, the cartridge here. I might, I might use live Boolean to do those two things. Moon mix, you can't get your head around creasing sometimes. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky thing. Super tricky. Okay, I'm just gonna make another box down here for the this uh, this. I think it's a laser sight, is what this is. Laser sight. <laughs> Sometimes. This way. Um, let's see, Pedro, how's it going, man? Uh, over on Facebook, what do you like about ZBrush for hard surface work? Um, some of the things that, um, some of the tools that ZBrush or Z Modeler has are much, much quicker than in other box modeling programs that I like, like specifically QMesh. And I also like, um, like over on uh, Twitch, that's somebody asked me if I use the live Boolean, the live Boolean stuff is, is amazing. I just need to remember to use it. <laughs> I, I always forget to use it. So one of these days I'll remember and I'll, I'll, I'll do some of it today so you guys can see. You guys can see me struggle with it. But th yeah, those are the reasons t typically that I, I would uh, use ZBrush over something else. I'm just going to do the site really quick. Let's see. I'm going to isolate this. Oh, 
Oops. So sometimes I'll just mask off a bit and then un unhide everything so I can see it and then invert the mask so only it's only letting me, you know, unmask just those two things and then I can just adjust it. Looks like I have this going way down into the barrel. That's all right. Like this. So I'll mask off the part that I want to move. Then I'll invert my selection or unhide everything, I guess. Invert my mask. Now I can move that bit. And you'll notice that my, my gizmo does not have to be right on the thing I'm moving. I can have my gizmo clear over here and I can move it. And it still moves the thing. Still affects it. Which is cool. I like that. Okay. And I like that ZBrush is very colorful with its polygroups. <laughs> I can really see all the pieces and parts that I'm putting together. It's kind of nice. Okay. Now I'm going to... Let's see. And Duplicate works with... Um, just whatever is is not masked. Okay, so I'm gonna mask those two things. Actually, I'm just gonna mask one. Okay, then I'll invert my mask. Then I can duplicate this. So I can move this gizmo. Hold down control and just duplicate it. Now I can kind of move it down in this area. Move it in. And then shrink it just mask this piece oh. let's see I wanted to cover like that what's up dude dude <laughs> how's it going welcome to the stream everything's yellow now everything new that I've made is yellow Okay, let's go. Uh, trying to decide if I want to build this uh, this piece behind the stock, or if I want to build the cartridge or the trigger. Sorry, this is the stock, not this. <laughs> this is like the body. Um, okay, let's see. Do you like how he's peeking out? <laughs> Peekaboo cowboy. Oh, you guys still, I'm still cracking up over that. Got to make sure my RGB is on. <laughs> Hired gun. Ah, you're cracking me up. What's up, Sumerian? How you doing, man? I'm just coloring this stuff up really quick. I don't know why. I just like it. <laughs> Light gray. Let's go kind of bluish for this metal. Come on. There we go. All right, let's fill this. Done. Oh, nice. Nice, that's always cool. Very cool, very cool. I'm doing pretty good for a Monday. See, no, it's hard for me to get to go high res with live boolean to low poly mesh. Yeah, you don't really want to use it with um, with high resolution. I, I typically don't use it with subdivision levels. I don't think it works with subdivision levels, to be honest. And yeah, you just don't want to, just don't want to take it too, too crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, and what's up, Ronnie? I need to, I need to message you, man. I haven't, I haven't gotten back to you. I've, that's super exciting, by the way. Okay, let's see. Um, so I have in, 
if you download my user interface and my brushes, you get this insert multi mesh brush. And it comes with these two cubes. I have a regular cube and I have a cube split. And you'll see like a regular cube is just a cube like this, but it has creased edges all around the outside like that, right? And a cube split is essentially the same thing, but it's been split down each side and those splits do not have um, creases. So that's all that is. So sometimes I like to, if it's gonna be something that's going down the center, like symmetrical, I'll typically use cube split because it already has a line down the center. And it gives me some more more polys to use. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> hey, John. Thanks so much. Learned how to use how to make teeth by watching how I make teeth. <laughs> Not that mine is the best way ever, but that's cool. Okay. This is gonna be an interesting shape because. It's, it's kind of hard to read because it goes back and cuts up and makes room for the trigger. So I'm going to go like this and then the cartridge will overlap it. I, I try to make these things look like they could actually function, but it's not, it's not always possible. Uh, let's see. Oh, Martin. Marlene over on uh, Facebook. How many times when do these streams take place? If you go to, uh, let me get you a link here. Uh, if you go to Pixelogic, I think it's pixelogic.com forward slash live. Let me see. No. Hold on a second. Maybe it's zbrushlive.com. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it is Z okay, it's pixelogic.com forward slash ZBrush Live. If you go there and you go to presenters across the top, you will see the schedule. You can see everybody, including myself, um, and you can click on me, my name, and you'll see past broadcasts and schedule. So you can see when I'm gonna be going live and you can see all of my past broadcasts. I've been doing this for quite some time now, so you can watch my past streams if you're interested. But uh, yeah, pixelogic.com forward slash ZBrush Live, so it's not just forward slash live. That'll get you 404. <laughs> oh, Sumerian, right on. Talking about movement and rotation between hip feet. Yeah, it's, it's super duper important. Super important. I really miss working with Ian. He's a great guy. Just wanting to shrink this in. Oh, help me identify why one of my static poses was bugging me. You couldn't figure out what was wrong. Yes, yes, that's super, super important. Also, um, like I was just saying earlier in the stream, um, I also recorded myself doing a, a freelance pose just recently. And I, I go over that exact same thing. I ran into a problem Whoops. with his hips and kind of show, I, I work through the process of how I fixed it. So that's, it's pretty fun to do. Thanks, Moon Mix. Pimping my stuff. <laughs> Always appreciated. Okay, let's see. Um, one thing you can do, see, see how this is kind of on an angle where the hammer is. Uh, what I could do is, you know, I could go through step by step and like mask this invert the mask and then move it over. You know, I could do something like that, which I could, um, or another thing you could do is use this clip curve and then do this. Ah, sometimes it doesn't always work. <laughs> it's actually pushing it down. It depends on the angle. It looks like it's dropping it because essentially what what clip curve does is it pushes everything on the on the faded side of the line down to uh down to the white dotted line and it's yeah that's not working so forget what i said <laughs> uh sure Sumerian. or you could send it to my email if you want me to take a better look at it and rusey yeah it's just kind of a four-sided star it's not really it's not really a 
you know, a sheriff star. It could be. But this this star is repeated down on, somewhere else on his on his costume. So, yeah, it's just a four-sided star. Pretty cool. Okay, so I take that back. I am going to do what I showed you in the first place. Sometimes things work out. Sometimes they don't. Uh, I forgot that it did that, actually. Click curve? No, clip. Clip with a P. Right here, clip curve. I mean, I could try trim curve. That kind of does. That will cut it off, but it'll give me these triangles and weird stuff, so I don't want that. I just want to push it back. Okay. Uh, uh, Pedro, do I use any macros or scripts in ZBrush? I don't, actually. I The only scripts I use are ones that people at Pixelogic have made, so they're all up in this uh, Z plugins area right here. Um, I do use, it's basically Z plugins. I don't make any myself. My friend Ian Jacobs made a few. Um, there's one in particular that I used of his. And it is, see this little group button right here? Export subgroups. When you export things out of ZBrush as OBJ files, like object files, uh, typically it will break them up. It'll break them up into all sorts of pieces. And that's not what you want. You want them to stay together. So you, what you need to do is turn off that group button. But it's a pain in the butt to go through every single subtool and turn off group on every single one. So uh, my friend Ian wrote one that, uh, that will allow group to be turned off every single subtool. You just hit the button once and it goes da 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 and it'll turn group off, everything. Hey Bridge, we got 93, 94. <laughs> That's cool. Right on. I, I don't pay attention to numbers. <laughs> I just do my thing. Okay. It's because of my peekaboo cowboy. He's getting all the numbers. Look at him. He's like, yeah. <laughs> hey, Hired Gun. Uh, when's my course opening for enrollment? Um, I'm going to do a summer one, so I, I don't know the exact date just yet. Because the reason why um, I told my students this is I've been doing some contract work lately, and that's kind of taken over, so to speak, and I want to make sure that my course is updated. I need to update it with some 2018 stuff. I need to update it with some... I'm going to be doing an, a whole new module. I'm not announcing what that's going to be on yet, but I'm going to do another module. And um, that's kind of my goal to get done before the next enrollment. And um, I have some other interviews that I need to do to add to the course. I'm constantly updating it. So it's not like it's, it's not stagnant at all. It's constantly being updated. Um, and as soon as I get that stuff done where I want it to be, I'm going to, uh, and that's a, that's a thick cartridge, but you know, it needs to be because did you see the bullets? They're here. Let me show you. Let me, let me, let me bring them out from behind my thing. Hello. So <laughs> if you look at these bullets on his, uh, his bullet holder down here, um, they go look at the size of that barrel. I mean, he's shooting dinosaurs with this thing, right? So <laughs> <laughs> sneak it back in there get back in there so uh this cartridge what it looks <laughs> i don't even know how this cartridge on it's gonna hold like what two bullets or something i don't know uh, maybe i'll make it bigger we'll see but it's it's a fun design anyway um so <laughs> i hope i hope that answers your your question yep wild west elephant gun yes updates coming soon you guys Thank you so much for being patient. I have I have some big plans to come in. And also a new uh a new contest is in the works, that kind of stuff. Okay, let's see. Hey, what's up, Corinne? How are you doing? I did get your message, Corinne, by the way, and yes, I will absolutely uh give you some feedback. So like I said, I've been thanks for your patience. Malchus is here in the house. How you doing, man? 
<laughs> right? The kickback? Like, but doom would knock you off your dinosaur. Yeah, no worries. Hey, Corinne, could you send me that? Send me your model, actually. <laughs> to my email address. You doing awesome? Very cool. I'm finally working on my cowboy again. It's been a while. Thanks, Corinne. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yours? Awesome. Yeah, no worries. That's a super cool model. I love it. And yes, it will be in the gallery. So I, you guys know uh, Scott, right? The Scott's one of my students. Um, he is actually helping me update my gallery. He's a fantastic dude. And uh, so I'm getting everything straightened, and you guys might get an email from Scott asking for more information. <laughs> so I'm going to be announcing that soon. And I'm going to be doing student highlights. So I'm going to be sending out, uh, it's kind of like t the top row over on um, ZBrush Central. You know how you can get on the top row. There's just, uh, there's, uh, I'm going to be sending out emails just on a weekly, semi-weekly basis, um, highlighting student work to to everybody on my social networks. <laughs> Why mortar? You think I'm not going to work on him anymore? I need to get him done for the Zebra Summit that Malicus is going to go to. Right, Malicus? <laughs> you going to meet me there again? That'd be awesome. Okay, let's let's make this stock. The stock's going to be the hardest part. Yeah, man. No, thank you. Thank you. It's really good. Yeah. How far would you have to travel? Are you East Coast? Okay, let's see. This one's going to actually take some sculpting. Start with a sphere. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, really? Wow. El Paso, Texas. I've, I've been to Texas very few times in my life. Okay, this is just, I'm just going to have to, <laughs> I'm just going to have to muscle through this. Even though, okay, and I'm going to make it a separate uh, sub-tool too. I'm trying to decide how I want to do this, because I want some structure to it, but I also want it to be sculpted. <laughs> Moon mix, come on you guys. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to add variety. All I get is heat. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's do split unmass points. Tw 12 hour drive? <laughs> How do you make that in 12 hours? <laughs> what are you driving? Because it takes 12 hours to drive from Utah to LA. Like, dang, dude. <laughs> you can fly. Are flights, are flights super expensive from there? Dodge Charger. Nice. Oh, I think I've, I think I've seen it. I think you posted on Facebook or something once. Recently, right? <laughs> I have new shirts. I'm even making some new shirts. I'm bringing them to Zebra Summit this year. They're pretty cool. Hey, Ruzi, can I add more stuff to my Gumroad page? I'd like to see my rendering workflow. Do I use Marmoset Toolbag? Ruzi, I actually have kind of abandoned Gumroad because I do my own thing now. Um, Everything, including what you're asking, is inside my course. I do a, a very, very large online course over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can see it right above my head. And you can see the link way up there. So um, I show you how I render in Toolbag. I show you how to bake maps. I show you how to make uh, game characters, all sorts of stuff. So, yeah. 
That is, I don't have it on Gumroad. I have it on my on my course, the big course. Let's see, mirror and weld. Um, hey, Malchus, I used to have a, a a 71 Chevelle when I was in high school. That's the closest thing to a Charger I had. <laughs> I miss that car. All right, let's see. Perfect, B done. Oh, thanks so much. Whoops. Oh, what the crap. Okay, I guess I just zoomed out. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to show you. Let me see if I can find a picture. Da -da. So you guys can see what I used to drive when I was in high school. <laughs> yep, there it is. Hold on. Oh, what happened? Here's a bunch of pictures of it. Oof. So it looked like this. Had uh, black stripes on the top. Oh, here we go. Like this. Had black stripes like this. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Missed that thing. Kind of looked like that. Didn't have fat tires in the back. <laughs> Wasn't as cool as these. Uh, it, was, it was pretty stock. It was kind of more like this. Oh, it had those rims too, right there. Those gray rims, just like that. And it had kind of a black top. Yeah, it was like that. Fun. But what I missed the most is my... Uh, I had a, a, nine, a Porsche 944. This. That was my favorite car right there. Kind of looked like that. I missed that thing. <laughs> anyway, all right, back to back to sculpting. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, give me on. Give me on a car topic. <laughs> the stock is looking like a the back end of a beetle, like a bug. Like a real insect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Days and confused. It was more like uh, 16 candles. <laughs> Is there a 944 in Days and Confuse? I really need to s to fix some things here. There we go. Chop that. Cut that. Uh, Noah Gomes, I could, I could, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not. He was asking why I'm not Z modeling the stock. Um, basically, because it's kind of organic and. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I don't know why I do the things I do. Chop this off better. Oh, come on. Is it not working because it's hidden? Guess so. Oh, come on. Sometimes, I don't know. Oh, geez, that's why. So it's actually cutting it, but it's not like trimming it. That's weird. So what I can do is hide that, delete hidden, and then fill holes. That's essentially doing the same thing. Close holes, boom. Gives me this mess, but I don't care. Okay. Now, what, I, what I'm going to do is, um, this is pretty cool. This is new to 2012. And, uh, <laughs> more kind of the DeLorean. I would love a DeLorean, honestly. Okay. Hey, what's up, Enya? Okay, um, so I want to combine these two, but I'm not going to use Dynamesh. That's typically what I would use Dynamesh for in the past. 
But now, and I showed this in the last stream, is if you turn your gizmo on, hit this gear. Where's close holes? It is, it's on my menu. <laughs> it's right here. Um, no, uh, it's under geometry, modify topology, close holes. Where is it? I can't see it. Delete hidden world points, close holes. There it is right there. See, that's why I don't, <laughs> that's why I have my own menu right here because it, uh, it, it makes everything easy to get, to get to. Okay. So let me get back to this. If you hit the gear and you hit remesh by union. Okay. Check this out. If I hit that, look at that. It just sticks them together and gets rid of the internal geometry. It's pretty cool. Let me make sure. Let me, then I can just click this and hit accept. Then it kind of keeps the geometry that I had before, which is sort of what I want. What's up, Pedro? 2000, did I say 2012? It's a Monday. It's a Monday. <laughs> Let's all go back. I'm talking about, is that what you said, my DeLorean? Holy crap, guys. <laughs> what year? What year is it again? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, hello. How you guys doing? I'm here. Okay. Bear with me. I'm going to save this. Save as Twitch. Look at 13. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I did. I said 2012. 2012. No, 2018. Added this. Uh, thanks for, thanks for uh, watching out for me, guys. <laughs> okay, let's go to um, this Z remesher, and we're gonna turn the poly count way down. Actually, instead of doing that, I'm gonna use the new, the new, the new 2012 tools, <laughs> 2018. It's also inside the Gizmo gear. Okay, you can go to remesh by Z remesher, right here which it'll also put a box around it like this. And you can pull this red cone to make it symmetrical across X. Okay, and then you can grab this white cone. Sorry, I'm kind of rotating it so we can see the cones. You can uh, pull this white cone out until it gets to about the number you want it to be, which we can try a thousand. That's a little, uh, we'll try it lower than that. Uh, Maybe 300. Try that. There we go. That's better. Look at that. It's pretty clean. Um, it just stitches it together. That's it. That's really cool. All it does is just stitch it together. It does make some triangles, but that's okay. Because this is essentially what I'm looking for. This is what I want right here. I just want a lower resolution mesh that I can mess with. So now that I like it, I'm going to click on the gear and hit accept. Now I'm done. Now it's essentially clean. I can hit D for dynamic subdivision. Makes it pretty clean. But I want to see this little part behind his thumb. It's hard to see, but I want to I want to pull that out and um where is object shadow? So you're talking about this right here, right? Object shadow intensity. That's kind of a harder one to find. Um so what that does is when you're modeling all the triangles. Yep, it adds triangles. Uh, you, I, I will typically turn this down to zero if I'm, especially if I'm modeling the face and I want to see underneath the chin, because ZBrush will add screen space shadows or object shadows that will get really dark. They almost go to black underneath, like the chin or something like that. So that's why I have this on my interface. So I can turn it to zero, but that is located under render. It's kind of hard to find. Um, Let's see, it's under sh one of these shadows. Uh, there's a, I think there's a way to find out where it is. Oh, button path. Preview shadows, OBJ shadow. That's another thing is you can hold down control and hover over anything on here and it'll tell you exactly where it is. See at the very bottom, see how it says button path, transform draw pointer. So if you wanna know where anything is, just hold down control, hover over it, it says button path. It's under render, preview shadows, object shadow. So that's where it is. So if you want to find out where something is, I just remembered that. <laughs> That's saying something. It's Monday and I can remember that. There we go. Back to the future stream, right, Pedro? 
with my flux capacitor. That's what they're saying over on Twitch too. Okay, so let's grab this and kind of uh, shape it. Oh, I don't have symmetry on. So, Malchus, if you're still here, how is the how's the weather in Texas right now? Is it starting to get pretty hot? <laughs> Bridge monger. <laughs> For sure. Okay, I'm just get, I'm trying to make like a shape where the trigger is going to go, but this is still too. I think it's too high. I'll have to figure it out. And then where the hammer is going to go, I'm going to have to figure that out. It hailed yesterday. <laughs> Man, that's no good. What the hail? <laughs> I'm horrible. Like big? There we go, that's better. Mm. Got over a hundred. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's getting to it's getting to be a hundred here in Utah. I was outside doing some yard work this morning before it got too hot. But it typically will get up to uh, in the hundred degrees here, and that's that's the hundred degree U.S. degrees. <laughs> the weird we were just talking about metrics versus inches. That's another thing degrees. Fahrenheit versus Celsius. Ugh. Gosh. It makes sense. We shouldn't use that. You're the furthest eastern tip of Texas. It's the only county in the mountain time zone. Oh, you're in the mountain time zone? So it's uh it's one twenty seven for you too. Nice. I did not know that. That makes sense if you can get to California in 12 hours then, if you're that close. Philip C. Are you pouting about the almost 90s here in Utah? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, it's getting 90s here. Okay, I want to pull that. this piece down more there we go oh it takes eight to nine to drive to Dallas which is 650 miles away <laughs> where are you at mortar A 77 yeah but you you have the you have the humidity too right in LA so like 77 in LA can feel like 90 here depending on how close to the ocean you are I guess oh. it's a little better I'm just grabbing some colors off of here and Remember, you have to have this this circle, this ring showing if you want to eye drop colors off of your reference if you're using Lightbox. All right. Um, come on, hide. Fill it. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of a bronzish color. Oh, Spain. 
Oh man, I want to go to Spain. Purple. Hey, Ruzi, what render I, do I use? Um, when I'm rendering out stuff, I'll either use uh, Keyshot or Marmoset. Depending on if it's a if it's a real time character or if it's a high res character. If it's a high res, I'll use Keyshot. If it's a game game character, I'll use uh, Marmoset. Let's see. <laughs> right? Moved away from Waco. 2009. 60 is 100 plus. Ooh, man. So there's there's a city in uh, Utah called St. George, and it gets, it gets in the hundreds and stays there for quite some time, too. It's in southern Utah. It's nice down there. You get palm trees and stuff like that. So there's there aren't any palm trees up where I'm at near Salt Lake City. Can you do a Marmoset tool bag live? Um so I do that, like I said, Ruzi, it's in my it's in my course. I've already done it. So I probably won't do an extra gumroad of it. And I won't show it here because this is Pixelogic's Twitch channel. So I only show ZBrush here. So I'm afraid if you want to see it, you probably have to pick up the course, unfortunately. Because um I'm just, I, I want to continually update the course, not make new content for Gumroad, if that makes any sense. Because I do, that's what I do full time now is my course. That's my, that's my gig. There we go. How did it get the name Salt Lake City? There's actually a gigantic lake that's uh, salt water. When when the first explorers found it, they actually thought they had found the ocean because it's salt water. But it's it's an inland lake that's salty. And there's the the Bonneville Salt Flats right next to right next to the Great Salt Lake. It's actually dried up and it's made this big flat salt flats that uh, there's it's it's really really big and that's where they do the land speed records because it's the largest flat surface around. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, look up Bonneville Salt Flats and you'll see the land speed record cars. They're, they're, like, they're like rockets. Sorry, sorry, Ruzi. Yep, no worries. Yeah, Caitlin, come on down. <laughs> Can check out Utah. And also Salt Lake, the Great Salt Lake is other than the Great Lakes up in uh, by by uh, northern U.S. That's the only lake you can see from space. That's kind of a you know that you can see as you're as you're floating around up there. <laughs> you're like, hey, there's a Great Salt Lake. So if you look on Google Earth, you can see the Great Salt Lake. It's pretty big. Yep, Bonneville. So they, I guess there was a, there was, I guess the Great Salt Lake was much, much larger back in prehistoric days. It was called Lake Bonneville. That's what they call it. And uh, it filled most of Utah back when there were, there were dinosaurs and stuff like that. Okay, let's do the trigger. Michigan. Yeah, the Great Lakes up by Michigan, Chicago. <laughs> That's why I said on Google, on Google earth you know when you spin around google earth and you go to utah you can see it it's also it's like utah history lesson it's also where the continental railroad tracks came together the golden spike is out by the great salt lake
and you can you can float in the Great Salt Lake like an egg because there's salt. You know, you, when you put salt in a glass of water and you can float an egg in it, that's, uh, you can kind of do that. <laughs> yeah, it's big. It's huge. It's not very deep, though. Great Salt Lake's not very big. Not not very deep. It's big, not deep. But what's what kind of, what kind of sucks is it's not since it's full of salt, you you can't really do any recreation on it because it'll chew up your boat. So the only boats that you see out there are sailboats. You can't really go water skiing on it. You know, you can't. It's kind of weird that way. And that's where here's another another bit of trivia. Uh, that's where sea monkeys come from. They're called brine shrimp. And they're grown in the Great Salt Lake. You guys know what sea monkeys are? <laughs> yep, brine shrimp. Okay. Um, hey, Noah, sure. Uh, my email is shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I don't know. I don't know if I have time for a ton of questions, but I'd be happy to try and answer some of them got some malicus right you know what sea monkeys are that's where they're from and it stinks Ooh, it stinks like the great salt lake not it's not a pleasant smell and that's why um that's why we get as much snow as we do because it's it's kind of in this valley so the the storm will circulate in in the utah valley and it will go back across the lake pick up a whole bunch of new water and then go back across the the Rocky Mountains that are to the um, east side of Salt Lake and dump a bunch of snow up up in those mountains. It's called the lake effect. But <laughs> okay, let's see. Just saving this guy again. His gun. <laughs> now he's <goes>, what? <laughs> oh, you guys. The chat has taken a turn. <laughs> it has turned. All right, I need to uh, I need to stretch out this scope. Not the whole thing. So that's another thing um, that you guys should know. Are the poly groups are temporary, so. They, you should only assign them as you need them, and you can change them all around. You can assign them whatever you want. And since I want to stretch out this scope, scope lengthwise, um, <laughs> yeah, you should. You should model like the sea monkeys that are in the ad, right? Those, those are awesome. Um, anyway, what I want to do is I want to turn on auto groups, and that will group everything in that's separate in its own island but the what it will do is it will not keep symmetry so it'll make new groups across the symmetry line so in order to fix that what you can do is uh, do mirror and weld and that will weld that'll mirror it across the center and it'll uh, symmetrize your your polygroups now my scope is one polygroup and I can isolate it easily and then stretch it stretch there we go. Then I want to um, shrink. Dude, Malchus, you totally should. <laughs> I'd be mad if you didn't. <laughs> Not mad. I'm so mad right now. No, that'd be awesome, dude. The whole family sitting around in the fish bowl. That's like the biggest, the biggest disappointment as a kid. You're like, I'm getting these sea monkeys. They were usually in, uh, it's called Boy's Life magazine. And uh, some other comic books and stuff. You'd see them in the back. I gotta, I gotta find it. Hold on a second. Did you find it? <laughs> oh, you found it. Okay, I'm gonna pull it down. Thanks, dude. Here it is. Look at this. <laughs> and they're like discreetly censored. <laughs> oh my goodness! Look at those things. Free. So, okay, now look at this. Okay, come on. Look at brine shrimp. All right, brine. That's that's a sea monkey. 
brine shrimp. This is what grows in the Great Salt Lake. And you get, they send you eggs in the mail. And then you put them in, a, in salt water. And then they hatch. And then they come out looking like this. See these eggs? These are eggs. Yeah. Oh, is there a South Park? <laughs> I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Anyway, yeah, dude. Sea monkeys. <laughs> Brine shrimp. They're just they're just, they just live in the Great Salt Lake. It's so that I think that's the only thing that lives in the Great Salt Lake, honestly. <laughs> oh goodness. Alright. What are we doing? What are we doing? Let's finish this gun up if we can. Let's make the hammer. Hey Marcus, I am using ZBrush for make for box modeling. Yes, I indeed I am. Uh, I did not box model this this stock, but uh, yeah, this can be done in ZBrush for sure. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. It's this Z modeler right here. It does it does a bunch. Yeah, yep, yeah. You should see what Malicus does with it. <laughs> hey Malicus, put up a link of your headphones really quick. Those things are insane. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the... So I, I just want a flat surface, right? So I'm going to draw the trigger and the hammer on the on the side of this, this cartridge right here. Even though the hammer is going to be over here and the trigger is going to be over here, I just want a flat surface that I can draw on. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to use my topological brush and I'm just going to draw a trigger. Um, Marcus, so it, it, it does most things. If you're used to box modeling in another program, um, you might have, uh, you, you might be frustrated expecting it to behave a certain way and it doesn't, but you can get used to it. And, uh, yeah, it's very, very powerful once you understand how it works. And there's a lot of tools that Z modeler has that other programs don't that make it much faster. Oh, you have it on YouTube. Nice. Okay. Yeah, you guys. So, uh, Mal Malicus is an amazing ZBrush artist and he, uh, he made those headphones out with the Z model. So how much of, how much of those headphones did you build inside of ZBrush? Should I ask that on the stream? Are you going to say none? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought you did most of it. So this is just, I'm just making the hammer. 100%, that's what I thought, okay. I was like, I was just thinking, I'm like, oh crap. He brought it in from another program. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. Super great. So honestly, I'm just getting, I, I, could, I could easily build this hammer out of an insert mesh box. Um, this is, uh, this is the top topology brush. So see this right here, topology brush. It essentially lets you draw topology on a surface. It's like a, uh, retopologizing tool, just like, um, like quad draw inside of Maya or something like that. It's, it's very similar. And now that I have this, um, I, I really want it to be on the zero zero like in the center of the world. But since it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, thanks for sharing that, Malicus. Super cool. Also, Malicus makes um, brushes and materials too, if you guys want them. So this, see this Ma shiny right here? Making this whole thing shiny. This is this is Malicus's uh, material. And he also makes, anytime you see uh, Ma cut, or anything that starts with M-A-H in the brushes. Those are his brushes. They're super cool. Did you the first person that, um, first brush that I used that wasn't stock with ZBrush? <laughs> Besides the, the damn standard brush. Okay. What I'm going to do with this now, you can just tap on the surface and it's going to make a thickness. See how it just made these extra pieces? See that? And... You might be thinking, what what is he gonna do with that? <laughs> you know. So now that they're they're, uh, I need to turn off dynamic, 
subdivisions to get them back to being square. This is kind of a weird way of doing it, but uh, whatever, I'm doing it this way. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to use my menu and do split unmass points. And what that does is it puts it in its own subtool. Then I can solo it. And now you can see that it's it's split, right? And what I want to do is I'm going to turn off symmetry. I'm going to turn on my floor so I can see where the center is. And I'm going to turn off symmetry by hitting X. That will allow me to delete one side. So I'm going to get rid of that and hit delete hidden. Now that's gone. And then just move this across the center. And it doesn't matter where I move it to because I'm going to hit weld, uh, mirror and weld right here. What that does is that's going to mirror it and weld it down the center and put a, put a center line down the middle. So there you go. I'm going to turn off the floor. And now we have these pieces, just these geometry pieces that now we can use as a as a trigger and a hammer. So that's essentially, I mean, I, I could have done an insert multi-mesh and made boxes. That's probably what I should have done, but I wanted to show you this technique. And you're absolutely welcome, Marcus. No worries. My pleasure. Okay, so I'm going to move this trigger down to about here. I know this looks crappy. I'll go in and um, edit it. And then I'll move the hammer kind of up where it's going to be, back here. And it's just stylized. So it's it's not, uh, you know, it's I'm not trying to make this realistic by any means. I'm just getting it so it looks like it's a, it's a you know, the, the trigger guard is what it's called. I'm surprised I can figure out the <laughs> that's called after today back in 2012 it was called a trigger guard <laughs> and you can use this gizmo so what I'm doing every single time is I'm just I'm masking out the thing I want to move and then I'm inverting the mask and then I can put the gizmo here over the top of it and just kind of edit that little that that group of edges. And then I kind of want to do, um, I, I like to do thick to thin, which is like, I don't like to keep the consistent thickness all the way through. So I, I look for opportunities to add, you know, t some tapering or something like that. So I'm going to have it I'm trying to decide what I want to do. And it's, he has it quite square in here. But I, I like it. I don't, I don't know. Let, let's make it square. Let's make it square. And I'm going to switch this to mark lasso or uh, mask lasso so I can have better control over that masking. Invert the mask. Move it down here. And when you get edges kind of close together, whoops, it, it's called um, support edges. And what that does is when you when you go to um, subdivide it, it's going to make a very nice subdivision in that area. And I'll show you here in a little bit what I'm talking about. Get over here. So I'm just going to kind of make this corner. It's kind of a pain to select something and then inverse mask it, but I don't know. Malchus, you might know of a better way to do it, but that's how I do it. <laughs> and the reason I'm selecting the entire thing is so I can select all the way through. Oh yeah, Control-Alt. I knew there was a way. Control plus Alt, and now look at that. Boom. Thanks, Pedro. I forgot about that. They just recently added that in 2018. <laughs> that's right. Thank you, dude. Okay, so what Pedro was just talking about is um, if I hold down control, it's going to mask that vert. Okay, if I hold down control plus alt and mask that vert, it's going to invert that mask. That's essentially what I've been doing is, is masking and then inverting, but in two steps. Now it's one step. Faster. Thank you, dude. All right. Now let's... Uh subdivide this. Did you know about that Malicus? That's that's kind of, it's new. Okay, let's see. I'm going to um, make this its own polygroup. 
make this its own polygroup. Just hitting Control W to put it in its own polygroup. And then the bottom of this, oh, I need to use lasso. Lasso. There we go. Same thing. And up top. Yeah, I thought I might have grabbed more than I wanted. Okay, now I just now I can go um, uncrease all, and then crease polygroup, and then it's going to put creases around all of those polygroups. Now, when I hit D to subdivide, it's going to give me some nice creases and be pretty sharp. There we go. Looks like a toy toy gun right now. <laughs> back to Facebook and make sure you guys aren't saying anything. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to grab this color and fill the hammer with it. This purple, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to make it uh, I'm going to take it back to gunmetal gray again. I just I dropped a color off of here and it was actually purple and I just filled it. I just haven't changed it since. <laughs> okay, now for this last little bit, let's try some experimenting and let's do a live boolean and see if we can get it working. Okay. So see these two these two rectangles slot things? What I want to do is I want to cut those out of of this. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this insert multi mesh, then grab a cube. Oh, come on. Straight. Oh. Scale it down, scale it up, scale it in. Let me begin. Okay. Now I want it beveled. See how it's kind of beveled? So I want to. Um, scale the inside of it down and you in order for this to work you need to have these in their own uh, subgroup or sub tool so I'm going to split unmasked points which is going to put it in this new sub tool and I want to fill it with that same purple whoops I need to be actually on the sub tool thanks moon mix yeah you guys I have my own online course so if you guys are interested in learning more and if you want this user interface or these brushes or my ruler file, feel free to go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and get on my mailing list. And if you do, you will uh, get my user interface and my brushes for free and uh, be notified when my course goes live again. Okay, so I'm adding the bevel now just by hand. See that bevel? Hey, what's up, Dante? Yeah, I changed the time. I changed the time so more people could watch, hopefully. Looks like we're up to 111 people. That's pretty cool. I don't know how many people are over on Twitch right now. 118? Yeah, that's pretty good. And then there's people on Facebook and people on uh, YouTube. So I don't even know how many people are watching right now. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Okay. So I'm going to turn on live Boolean and I'm not sure what it's going to do. It's going to blow up in my face probably. Okay. So nothing happened because I don't have anything turned on to uh, invert or subtract. So I want these two pieces to subtract out of this one. So I'm going to turn on subtract. Let's see. No, no, but I need to push them in. So they're actually, like that and then hit there you go check that out is that the coolest thing ever live boolean awesome so now what I can do is I can duplicate it just by holding control and just moving it over and now I have these pieces that are subtracted out of there that I didn't have to go and model every single little you know, support edge to get those to be subtracted out of there. Awesome. Thank you, ZBrush. <laughs> Super cool. All right. I'm just glad that worked. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> I hope it works. 
No, that's cool. So basically what happens, and another thing with live Boolean is these, these start arrows too. So you have that, uh, <laughs> right? They're super cool. Okay, so uh, see the start arrow right here? Basically that says everything from that arrow down is going to partake of this live Boolean operation in this area. So for example, if I turned on, if I turned on the, the arrow, let's see, is it this one? Maybe not. So it, it essentially is a way to group things together. And it's basically saying, okay, from here to here, subtract everything out of the thing above it. You know, that's, that's kind of how the grouping works. And, um, what did you say, Sumerian? Would that live Boolean subtraction work on a dynamic mesh? Yes. So this, when you're, so it won't work on a dyna mesh. It might, but it does work on a dynamically subdivided mesh. So like if I hit D and this is dynamically subdivided, see that? It's still working. It's still being cut out. Uh, let's see. Why isn't it though? There we go. See, it still it still works. Pedro, what are you talking about? The what end? Like back here? Make it flat on the sides because of the hard shadows edges on the concept. I guess I don't know what you're talking about. And I, I, I need to bevel this cartridge and I need to shape this properly right here. And then bevel underneath this. So this is beveled down here. Yeah, there's a bunch, there's a bunch of stuff I need to do. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's see. I don't want to angle this. That's a, that's another thing you can do too. See, see this uh, this right here. The reason it's kind of being um, it's showing it in this weird way. Oh, the sides of the wood. Oh, so they're not round, you mean? This is kind of round? Are you talking about like you'd flatten this whole thing out? Yeah, I'd probably do that. Yeah, so it's not like the super like an oval. So it's more like flat on these two sides. Yeah. Well, I can probably do that. Okay, so I'm going to do another cut. See this? I want the bottom, it's not a barrel, but the bottom of the barrel, this tube underneath here, I want it to have that cut angle, right? Like like this, kind of similar. So I can go through here and I can move every single vert back. That's something I could do. Or I could use live Boolean and make a cube. Here, let me reset this, uh, there we go. So insert mesh is based off of where your gizmo was last if you're going to snap it like this. So that's another thing. Um, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to actually make it from the front because I want it symmetrical. Yeah, the, the roughness is coming, kind of coming from the, the alpha channel that I blocked out too. So, okay, I'm going to separate this split and mass points. Now it's in its own thing. And if I cut it, let me see, I need to move it. There it is. Uh, okay. So what I can do now is, um, this, this isn't going to work though, because I, I only want to cut out this piece and I'm going to have to separate that piece into its own subtool so I can cut it out. Otherwise it's gonna cut off this whole barrel, which I can do. I can do that. Let me, uh, let me just split it off here. So I'm gonna take this and I'll just split it. 
So split hidden. Now it's in its own thing, but I need to make it so it's underneath here. Um, and turn off the start arrow. And then I don't want to subtract this out of anything, but I want to subtract this cube right here out of this, what's above it. And it will show you this cube until you select off of it like that. See how it's, it's cutting through this whole thing? And this is what I'm talking about, okay? I don't get the notification if your Pixelogic stream is happening every single time. Oh, dang. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how the start arrow works really quick. Um, I don't know what to tell you about the notifications from Pixelogic, I wish. That's, that kind of stinks. Okay, so I want these two pieces. See these two yellow pieces? I want them to be cut out of the cartridge that's connected to this, the gun right here. So I'm going to go, here's the gun. I have a start arrow on it, and I want it to cut out. But it's also, this cube down here is also cutting out of the entire, the entire gun. You can see it right there. See how it's cutting it out? It's kind of hard to see because it's the background's purple or it's the value's similar. But if I hit this arrow right here, now it's only cutting it out of the part that's above it, which is that bottom tube. Okay, so now if I grab this, and this is what I was going to show you. This is the way you can mask this off and angle it and then unmask it and move that to be any angle you want. It's kind of hard to see because this cube is in the way, but if I click off of the cube, just grab something else, like the gun or something, you can see how it's being cut now. See that at the same angle? Without me having to move all of the vertices, which is awesome. And that's kind of how you, another way you can use uh, live Boolean as well. Cutting pieces out of pieces and parts out of parts and Boolean's awesome. And then if you want to make it in the end, you can just uh, merge it all together and, you know, make it work. So, all right, guys, it is 2.02. It's time for me to wrap this thing up. Um, let me show you where, where he currently stands with the rest of everything. He's going to be standing on his, on his rifle here. And I'm going to have to do some uh, scaling for sure. I know, right? Live Booleans are so cool. So cool. Uh, yes, Marcus, it will be on Pixelogic's YouTube channel. If you go over to uh, pixelogic.com forward slash ZBrush Live, let me show you. Da -da, where is it? I had it. Pixelogic.com. Sorry, I should have had this ready. Okay, so if you go to right here, and I'm, I'm live right now. Um, if you see pixlogic.com forward slash ZBrush live, you can watch me here, but you can also go to presenters right here, and you'll see me right here, and how you can connect with me, and also my past broadcast and schedule. So you can see all of my past uh, ZBrush Live videos. And I've done quite a few. I have like more than six pages f of that. So I've been doing this for a while. But if you go want to go back and watch all my stuff, that's where it is. And here's my schedule. This is when I'm going live next. And uh, yep, there you go. And like I said, if you are interested in my course, you can sign up for my free brushes, user interface, and ruler file over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And uh, yeah, this is the guy. And I also have his dinosaur to let's see where's his dinosaur that's another cool thing with this arrow see this arrow pointing down you can click unhide on the very first um, sub tool that has the arrow and it'll unhide everything in that in that little group so it looks like he's purple okay so <laughs> hold on it's unhiding his head is that that's his old head let me hold on a second let me make let me hide everything than just this. This is the old one. 
there's something in there that's okay is that the new head I don't know anyway he's in here <laughs> no head new head with all his teeth and everything that's his old and his eyeballs and his claws and stuff like that so I'm in the middle of building him still but what it looks like is um, let me show you really fast you can see this is uh, an image that my friend Kevin Keel did let me turn the opacity up so this is essentially where the idea for him came from and uh, yeah just fantastic illustration and I want to print this somehow and get it get it so it's not gonna fall over somehow like uh, strengthen it with some metal or something and then it's gonna be this so this cowboy and this cowboy was designed by uh, Johannes Helgeson, and you can find his art on his art station. And here is the final piece, and he drew his own version of the, the dinosaur, which I might end up modeling this one as well. I just like the look of the faster, sleeker one that Kevin did and the, the pose that it's in. It kind of has a dragon look to it, you know, versus a dinosaur, but it's super cool. I love this. And I can't wait to uh, get it 3D printed and get it finished. But I will be, I, I will hopefully get it done and printed and bring it to the ZBrush Summit again this year, like I did the Pirate Girl last year. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for, uh, for, for following me today and uh, stopping by on your Monday, your busy Monday afternoon. Um, and we will be, let's see, what's, let me see what's next week. Okay. Ma, ma, ma. June the 14th. Okay, so um, yeah, I will be back next Monday on the 11th at the same time. So noon mountain time. I think that's 11 Pacific time. So, and we'll continue building up this cowboy. So <laughs> thanks everybody for joining me today and uh, take care. We'll see you next time and uh, happy sculpting. E3 next week. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Take care. Cheers. See you, Malchus. Bye, everybody.